Hey everybody, good afternoon and welcome back to Mad Horse Barbecue. My name is Brian and uh, we got some boxes on a pallet that can mean one, well it can probably mean more than one thing. But what we got going on here is we got a new grill, that's right, grill number 26. Uh, excited to say that this is the 59 inch stainless steel. Uh, this is charcoal and propane and it is a rotisserie pit. Uh, this is made by Smoke Daddy Inc. right up front. I will say they did send this to me uh, and they asked me if I'd shoot some videos on it, uh, including an assembly and an unboxing video, which that's what this video is gonna be. Uh, but with that being said, right off the bat, thank you to Smoke Daddy Inc. for sending this to me. And also with that being said is uh, I'm still gonna give my two cents and I'm still gonna give an honest opinion on what I think of this. Um, not gonna be cooking on it today. Uh, I got it about a month ago and I just haven't had a chance to use it. You know, my basement got some water in it and just had the basement waterproofed uh, last week and you know, girlfriend's been sick, kid's been sick. It's just been a, you know, it's been a fun, We'll just say it's been a sporty uh, month here in Southwest Minnesota, but happy to say today, there's no snow on the ground. It's like 50 degrees, light wind, so hopefully the audio sounds good today. Uh, so I couldn't ask for a better day to get this thing put together. So uh, that's what this video is gonna be. Uh, I will be doing quite a few videos on this, uh, obviously 59 inch, uh, you know, 60 inches, it would be five foot, uh, right? 12 inches and a foot. 12.5, 60 miles an inch, yeah. So, you know, 59 inches, you know, you can fit a lot, a lot of food on here. Uh, what's cool about this one is it's all stainless for one. Uh, it's from, you know, Smoke Daddy Inc. makes it. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys, if you've watched my dad's channel before, you've probably seen him use the pellet grills by Smoke Daddy Inc. Uh, he's been, you know, affiliated with them for, for many, many years, and uh, I'm pretty excited to have an opportunity to collaborate with them as well. So uh, without further ado, let's stop the blabbing and let's get putting this thing together. You know, right off the bat, I do have to say everything is fairly well packed. Uh, everything's kind of individually wrapped up. We got a lot of bubble wrap, so that is always good to see. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking it out of the box right now, and uh, I got the styrofoam there, and I'm just putting stuff on the styrofoam for now. All right, guys, well, real quick, I should figure I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, all this stuff is uh, all stainless, obviously, and it all comes wrapped up really, really, really well uh, to avoid damaging any shipping. Uh, but what comes on it is a white film. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do, so what I've been doing and what I'm gonna continue to do is take everything out of the bubble wrap and take all that white coating or that, you know, that white protective surface off. Uh, it comes off relatively easy. Uh, some of the parts are a little nicked up just cause I don't know what it is, but freight carriers lately have a tendency of playing like bumper cars with your packages on the way here. But I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff removed and then we'll pick back up when we're actually assembling the grill. All right guys, we're back out of the white film off. Uh, I will say that white film, it says right in the instructions, might be time consuming. Uh, it, it probably took me over two hours to get all that white film off. It didn't come off hard, it's just, you know, it's just a lot of it. And then, you know, you can kind of see how it, it curves this way, then it goes up and then it goes out. Um, like there was a little slit where all the bends were, where it kind of broke. Uh, so you pull this piece off and then there's a little pinstripe there. Pull this piece off, little pinstripe. Pull this piece, little pinstripe. Uh, but happy to say that it's all off. Uh, so now it's time to put the grill together. So step one, it's gonna go step by step, I think. Step one is uh, set roaster body on a raised surface. Bingo, got that. Uh, and now using a 14 mil wrench or socket, attach the legs in each end of the spit. Roaster body with the long bolts and washers. Uh, I can't find any washers in this kit, so either I'm blind, which very well might be, or there's no washers. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach the legs. A 14 mil bolt, raised surface, I'll put it right into the hole, just like that. Grab another one, last one in. Okay, got all those in, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them hand loose, go on to the other side. The next three in, one, two, and three, I'm gonna snug these all up. By snug them, I'm just gonna go hand tight like I did on the other side. All right, step one would be done. All right, next step would be attach the casters onto the spit roaster legs, uh, hand tight along with the large washers provided. Again, I don't see any washers. Um, 
I'm gonna give this kit a once over here, but I would think the washers would be included right in the pack that the bolts were in, uh, but I'm not seeing them. But again, uh, next step is to put the casters on the legs. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. First things first, take a look at that washer. There's four of them. Uh, they're all, you know, they all pivot and they're all locking heavy duty, you know, uh, coasters. Uh, so that's pretty dang nice. We are gonna do this part while it's in the air still. Put these on right by hand. Yep. A pair of grip gloves really get some good torque on them. There's one, two, three, and four. That's good for the casters. I believe now I can get this thing off the table. Um, it's stainless, should be relatively light, so we're gonna go ahead and just lift her off. I'm just gonna go ahead and wheel it to the side for now. Thing's gigantic. All right, next step, it would be assembling the hood. Uh, again, it says do not tighten any of the screws all the way until the spit roaster is completely assembled. Uh, once completely assembled, uh, hand tighten all screws. Uh, so it says set spit rotor box. Woo! Set the spit roaster body on a flat surface and attach the left and the right side panels using four screws at each side of the main body. So let's go ahead and do that. I am using an impact, but I'm just gonna go really light because uh, these uh, holes are kind of inset in there and there's a little ridge up, so it's kind of hard to use your fingers. Uh, but with this impact, it makes it pretty easy. But, and I'll just show you, you know, I'm using my impact. You want to be careful though, because uh, on the insides of these, they thread into these little, uh, uh, they're like threaded collars and they're usually just like tack welded on there or they're a press fitting on there. Uh, so if you go too many with an impact, uh, you will break that loose. So. Just hand tight, you know, you can use your impact or you can use your drill to uh, get them going and get them pretty much all the way down. But when you go to tighten them, just use a, use a screwdriver. Sides are on, I'm gonna leave them all hand loose. All right, next step is attach the small side pieces to the front hood using five screws for each side. And again, I'm just putting these all hand tight. Yeah, and I am gonna snug those up just like that. I move on to the next side. All right, and again, they're all started. I'm just gonna go ahead and snug them all up. All right, sides are on. All right, next step is attach the rear panel with the burners to the back portion of the spit roaster. Uh, use three screws on the bottom and three screws for each side. Lift it up under there just like so. This might be where a second set of hands helps, but we're too deep into this now to go ask the neighbor. One in. One side in. Sides are in. I'm going to leave everything. Uh, I'm going to leave everything loose. Uh, so on to the next step. All right, now I gotta go and put the piece up here that has all the vents on it now, so go ahead and do that. Yeah, I'm just gonna put these on somewhat snug. I need some easy ones to get into. No obstructions here. Now the audio might be getting a little uh, windy. Uh, the wind has picked up here in the last, or the wind has picked up here in the last half hour, hour or so. So, trying to get out of it. Uh, I bought some better covers for my mics. Uh, the covers are the wrong covers. We'll have to see how it goes. There are screws on the inside that attach this too. I did tighten those 10 up. Uh, I am still gonna go around with them all done and tighten the rest of them up, but I figured while I was there, they should be fine to tighten up. And if they're not, well, then, uh, We'll just have to cross that bridge when it comes to it. All right, I think one of the last steps here to assembling the body of this grill is putting the hinges on and getting the hood installed. So let's see if I can do that. Do one hinge at a time. Experience tells me I should maybe put the hinges on the hood first or the door first, but uh, I don't wanna. So we'll see how this works. Again, these are just gonna go on snug. I mean, the good thing about like a 
pins like this it's already machined is that uh, there really is only one spot it's gonna go so that should make for a pretty even lid when it's all said and done all right we're gonna try to get the hood on see how that goes so good and again I'm gonna put the screws in just hand tight once I get one on each I know it's not gonna come off so that's my goal right away boom boom should be good huh. I'll be this thing is rather large as of right now too I will say but even though I couldn't, I couldn't find them washers in the beginning, um, and I looked again, I think they just didn't get packed, or the directions are out of date. Uh, this has definitely had more than enough parts and screws for everything. I'm gonna go ahead and run these in. Then the last step would be, once everything is assembled, to go ahead and hand tighten um, all the screws. Um, Okay, there's still some parts that need to go on here. Maybe there's more instructions somewhere, but I'm just gonna, for right now, I'm gonna get that uh, front handle on and then we'll go from there. Okay, that handle's on, let's get the side ones on. Some of this would be a little easier with an extra set of hands, I will say that, but we are past the point of no return now. All right, handles are on. Go ahead and see how this thing opens and closes. Assume the side handles are on there because of this. Man, that is, that's a grill. <laughs> uh, open. It's pretty neat. All right, on to the next step. Uh, one thing I did forget is I gotta go through and I gotta tighten everything up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Uh, the spare pieces I have, so you can actually use this pit two different ways. Uh, you can use this pit with the hood on, which I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do 99.999% of the time. Or the pieces I have left is pretty much just a rotisserie mount. So you can use it without a top. So if you wanted to do like a whole hog roast or some chickens or anything right over coal uh, and not have anything up here, they give you that option as well. Um, again, I'm probably not going to use it that way, but it is kind of cool that you could use it that way if you wanted. Um, obviously if you did want to use it that way, you would have to go around and remove the sides, the back, the hood, and then put that other mechanism on, uh, which no thanks, not, not today. So I'm just going to go around, hit everything, get everything tight. Okay, that'll be good there. And all right, now this thing's pretty much fully assembled. Uh, just a few steps left, I think. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this video good. So I'm gonna get the rest of the, the inside put in. It comes with some charcoal trays, comes with some grill grates. Uh, we're gonna get the rotisserie spit with that basket put on as well. So let's go ahead and do all that right now. Number two. We got three grill grates that come with this too. Because if you wanted, you could load this thing up with coal and you could cook right on the grates. Could do a lot of uh, a lot of burgers, a lot of hot dogs on here if you wanted. That's that. Pretty neat. God, I just I just can't get over the sheer size of this. Like this thing is this thing is huge. Like I'm 6'4 and I mean this thing almost when the lid is up, the lid's almost taller than I am, but uh, I think let's go ahead and get the rotisserie spit in. You know, it's, I think that's why the grates are on there, honestly, because, you know, I probably, kind of high up, but I don't know, you can probably, you know, you could use that rotisserie basket attachment right there if you wanted. We gotta get this thing plugged in and see if this thing spins. <laughs> but that's not the coolest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Well, not quite the coolest, but that's, that's second coolest. But you can fit a lot, a lot of meat on there. Um, 
you know, just right off the bat, I bet you you can probably fit five butts um, per, you know, rack. So you can fit 20 pork butts on there. So you can do a lot of meat. All right, well, this thing is all put together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a 360 uh, view of this, or just kind of like a little 360 walk around in this grill and then wrap this up because this is gonna be a bit of a longer video. Uh, I am gonna do another video on seasoning this uh, just cause, uh, well, I want to and I can, so. Starting out front, three handles on the front, obviously, and I was curious to why you needed three handles, but it's uh, because that metal's gonna get hot and uh, you're gonna use that middle handle to start to lift it and then grab the side so you don't have to touch the surface of the grill. Really like this, how this thing moves around. It moves around really easy for being a tank of a grill. Uh, see down here. Uh, well, I got my sunglasses on. See down here, it's got the intakes already. Uh, those are pretty much, it looks like they're just open all the time. Uh, that's fine by me. This thing really isn't gonna be a super low and slow cooker when you're using charcoal. Um, although, you know, when you're using propane, propane is regulated, so it'll be pretty easy to control that. Got five adjustable vents on the back. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I count good, five. You know, just the daisy wheels, they open and close, pretty nice. Uh, I do have the propane line here. This will just screw right up into here uh, when I am ready to get it. Uh, I will have to go buy some propane uh, because I have one propane tank. It's hooked to my Blackstone, and my Blackstone is, well, let's just say I gotta move about f f seven or eight grills to get to it. I don't feel like doing that. I'll buy a new tank. See that rotisserie? You can mount that motor on either side. So the knobs to turn it on, casters. These are nice, you know, like I said, these are really nice casters. I don't know if I showed you that before, but it's off and on. Uh, so obviously it's on right now, but if I were to just step on the gray, it's off. Step back on the red, it's on. Not gonna go anywhere. Open up the grill. Got the rotisserie basket in there. I think primarily that's how I'm gonna be using this most of the time, although I am gonna be doing a whole hog on this. Um, those of you asking, those of you asking, no, I've never done one, so it's gonna be quite a bit of research on my part uh, to do some, just a little bit of, you know, quite a bit of research before I take on a project uh, as big as a whole hog, and I might just go throughout the neighborhood and put envelopes in people's mailboxes saying 10 bucks a plate or something and see what happens, but yeah. Pretty cool inside the grate. You know, like I said, three grill grates. Obviously, if I'm using this rotisserie basket uh, setup, I'm not gonna have the grill grates in there just because there's no point for it. I got the coal baskets in there. Uh, it's, you know, this is nice because it's dual. You know, because you can put the coal in the coal baskets or you can turn the propane on uh, and use the propane for the heat. So what you could do is maybe just build yourself a little fire over in one corner uh, with some wood on it, get some good smoke flavor on your butts, but then use the propane uh, to regulate your temps and to cook your butts. Uh, it's kind of a pretty big benefit in my opinion, because for one, your meat's only gonna take on so much smoke. And for two, um, there's, really, there's really no reason to burn more charcoal once things are wrapped, um, just because well, it's, I mean, you can do what you want, but there's just not a huge benefit to it. But yeah, all in all, uh, this was relatively simple to put together. Um, I'm, I'm not, not going to lie. I bet you in total when it come, when it came to unpackaging things, taking the protective film off of all this uh, and putting everything together, I'd probably say this was at least a four hour assembly job just for me and myself. Uh, I think if you threw another person in there, uh, you'll probably shave an hour, oh shoot, probably. I bet you it took me over an hour and a half, two hours. I bet you it was two hours just to take the, the film off all this stuff. So you throw a couple people in here, get a couple buddies, a couple cases of beer. Uh, you could probably knock this thing out in probably just a little over an hour, but uh, I kind of like doing assembly stuff like this myself if I can. Obviously, uh, it, you know, the instructions do recommend two people, uh, but what's nice about this is it's stainless. Stainless is lighter, uh, so it was very easy for me to handle. So now, you know, besides that, again, I just want to say thank you to, you know, to Smoke Daddy. Uh, for sending me this grill, super excited to get using it. Uh, I will say there is a lot, a lot of stainless steel on here. So uh, Tom Horseman, you know, dad, sorry. Next time you come into town, well, I got a project for you. <laughs> but now, uh, besides that, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Uh, you guys and girls have a good day. Thank you for watching. See you next time.